you, when you walk out of here today, please grab one. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, and if you were here yesterday for the dinner, for the lunch, you still get one of those out there also. So this was a, a two-way thing. Um, um, also, a, a thank you to all that were here yesterday uh, to help uh, uh, serve the ladies, um, all the men, all the people that were part of that, and even the, the uh, teenagers that were here. Um, it went really smooth yesterday. Uh, I believe the food was good, and I believe everybody got full. Uh, so uh, just a thank you for those men that helped, for uh, Lise also, for her help, and also for the ladies that came. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> well, we could have, but we'd have been, we'd have been really full uh, the time the day was over. But um, anyway, that's, uh, those are the three things that I wanted to make sure that I got out there. But other than that, uh, we've got a beautiful day out there. It's wonderful. It's been raining for, I, I, it seems like, months out there. And we got enough rain for months, but... Uh, got up this morning, I was watching the sun, and I'm thinking, wow, it's going to be a pretty day today, and uh, even with my tall grass. So uh, enjoy the weather. Uh, I hope it's uh, going to stick around, but what a wonderful day getting up in the morning with the sun shining on Mother's Day. Amen. Wonderful day. And with that, we'll go ahead, if we could stand, uh, we'll go ahead and open up in prayer, and uh, we'll begin this service. Lord God, we just thank you for mothers. Uh, Lord, we thank you for, uh, God, not only... Uh, good mothers, uh, Lord, but just for righteous mothers. Uh, Lord, we know that um, uh, wisdom uh, cries out in the streets. Wisdom cries, uh, Lord, from uh, the high towers on the highest place, crying out, uh, Lord, to her children, uh, Lord, to follow her, to uh, heed to her instruction, heed to her wisdom. Uh, God, and as a mother, it's so hard, uh, God, to watch our children suffer, uh, Lord, by bad decisions. But also, God, the blessing of watching those children come back or watching those children follow, uh, uh, Lord, uh, that wisdom is a wonderful thing. And God, it takes a mother um, in this world uh, to raise up those kind of children. God, I pray that today as we sing, uh, God, that we'll remember the care that you have for us, the wisdom that you have for us, the, uh, the, the, the beacon of light that shines from that great lighthouse, God, and the lifeboat that comes and, uh, Lord, rescues uh, the perishing, God. We thank you for that. But most of all, God, we thank you for dying on that cross for our sin, for shedding your blood. God, I pray this morning as we preach, as we sing, as we lift up your name, uh, God, that we honor mothers here today. Uh, Lord, we'll give you all praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you got your red hymn books, which I don't, uh, please turn to page 316. Page 360. Hey, Landon, I will be using you. We're going to need you for the offering when it comes time. I forgot to tell you it's a for sure, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks so much. the same book my redeemer amen lift him up today man without him we wouldn't be here we'd have no need to be here he is a great redeemer
man paid the debt and set me free. You know, we got, you can all be seated. We talk about liberty a lot in our country, and I praise God for the land that I was born in. I praise God for a country that we have freedom to worship Him. But that freedom came at a cost, and that cost was the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's because of that blood that we have liberty to serve Him in truth and in spirit. And if that doesn't make you want to shout, you got to get something fixed in your heart because it ought to excite you. Um, it ought to get your heart moving, get your feet going. It ought to, as my grandma would say, it ought to put a little pep in your step. Because uh, that blood is what gave us the liberty to be here. Our governors, our presidents, our government, they can take it away carnally, but they cannot take it away spiritually. And we can keep praising God and serving Him with the liberty that He's gave us because they cannot take that away. Amen. Seen a lot of churches closed down over the last couple of years during COVID. And I praise God that we were able to keep our doors open, uh, that we still had people that were coming to church. I was thinking about that this morning. I pulled in after going and picking Diana up. We were pulling in. I was looking at all the cars in the parking lot. And uh, there's a lot of churches today whose doors are shut. And there's no cars in the parking lot. Not because they aren't having church, but because through COVID, people didn't come back. And I'm looking out there, and we've got a nice little church here this morning. And uh, praise God for that. That's only because we practice that liberty that God gave us through the blood that he shed on Calvary for us. And praise the Lord for that. Amen. Um, for today, uh, uh, I'll be doing the announcement. Sean and Shelby had to uh, get back home to, I believe, take care of Henny. Pray for Henny. She came out of the surgery uh, doing very well. But um, as you all know, the first couple of days is is pretty all right when you're home, but then the real work begins. So uh, keep praying for her, for her pain levels, and uh, just that she'll be able to commune with God through this time and uh, take a little break and get a little time with God. Um, it, it's, it's Lift your sisters up. Lift your brothers in Christ up. That's a very important thing. Um, I want to give a special worship, uh, welcome to everybody that's here today, to the visitors, to the members alike, uh, especially to the mothers. If I can get all the mothers to stand up. I just want to take a look and, and, and just kind of... Uh, now, everybody else needs to look at them and realize, without them, you wouldn't be here today. Amen. If you've got anything to be thankful for, and you're not able to think of something to be thankful for your mama for, be thankful that she birthed you. Amen. Maybe your mama's not here, maybe she's passed away, maybe, you know, uh, whatever life situation holds, but praise God for mothers, amen. You may be seated, you may be seated. We're going to do two things here. Um, first of all, first off, we're going to uh, go ahead and have the men come up and Landon uh, to take up the offering. I tell you what, uh, this young boy getting ready to come up has been, been a wonderful, uh, wonderful blessing these last two Sundays, amen. Uh, he, he, he gives us that even number of four that we uh, absolutely need. Now, if we didn't have, if we only had four, we could, or only had three, we couldn't take, take up an offering. Got to have four, right? <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, if uh, uh, Brother uh, Randy, can you pray for the offering, please?
but I don't want I don't want the winner taken off out of here once 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 she wins she's got to you're going you're going to have to sit through an hour and a half of preaching before before we do that hey amen got a lot going on today and uh I, I do pray that uh, I don't uh, miss something, but um, we're, we're going to be singing a hymn, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick the song out myself. But if I can get Mary Jo to just play something, uh, we're going to take a moment uh, to just go around and say hi to everybody. Just a moment, all right? I, I, it's, it's hard. You say a minute to Baptist and the preacher spends 20 minutes rounding them all back up so we can get the service going. So... Uh, just uh, just go around, shake hands, or just turn around and shake the hands with the person behind you. Um, you know, yeah, there we go. Say hi to your husband. So with that, as Mary Jo begins to play, uh, just go around and say hi to everybody. It's warm. Well, look at that. They're already going back to the seeds. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. I'll just tell everybody there's a bag of straw in their seat. <laughs> Amen. Well, while you was all out shaking hands and I, I worked my way, I told, told Jeremy it's like swimming, swimming upstream going with the salmon. Uh, you know, you, you, just, you get caught up and it just takes you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but while I was back there, I picked up uh, our um, testimony uh, song for the day. Um, and it is on page 238 of the Blue Book. Uh, the song is Because He Lives, and you cannot sing that song enough. Amen. Because He is the reason. He rose from that grave, and because he lives, we, we can have life too, amen. And here's the testimony, love the whole song, but especially verse 2. When my grandson had cancer, this song was chosen by church to sing the week before surgery, and an altar of prayer 
by all. Boy, a lot in that testimony. Trust in God, struggles, um, but because he lives, amen. We got somebody we can go to, and we got people that can go to him too to pray for us. Amen. Page 238 as we all stand. Because he lives of the blue book. I believe uh, there's going to be a song. So if uh, the choir is uh, going to hand the service over to them, amen.
Sorry, guys. Only, <laughs> only, amen. Uh, I tell you what, if I could bottle up what I'm feeling right now I'd and sell it, I'd be a millionaire. But you can't. You can't bottle it up. It just keeps overflowing. You can't sell it. You can't explain it. You can't market it. There is no explanation for that joy, the real joy that comes from being saved and seeing God move on somebody's life and watching that process, amen. You think back about, think about that day you got saved. Think about what you were, whether you were caught up in, in hardcore sin, whether you were caught up in, in just uh, pride, or maybe it was religion, whatever it was. Think back on that day when you bowed down and accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and the joy of the burden of sin that got lifted off of your back. At that very moment, and honestly, in this world, at that very moment is probably the cleanest we'll ever be in this world. Think about that day. That'll fill you up. You watch somebody grow. You think about your own growth. You see others come to know Jesus Christ and just watch a complete turnaround of their life before your very eyes. You know, you watch your brothers and sisters in Christ. You get involved, in, you'll see that. Amen. You'll see that whether they're saved two days or 30 years. It's that's why God said that uh, he's continuing to work on us, amen. He, we are a work in progress, amen. We are, um, he's, uh, he, he is moving every single day in our lives to give us a closer walk with him. Brother, cro cro or, uh, praise team, Steve, uh, wonderful. I'd love to see that all the time. <laughs> I'd love to see that all the time. Well, all right, so what we're going to do, um, I am going to draw this name. Actually, I'm not going to draw it. I'm going to come out there and find somebody because I was telling telling the ladies back in the Sunday school room when I draw Jessica's name, <laughs> it will look crooked. Even if it's even if it is crooked, it'll look crooked. You know, so. No, no, no. I, I told her you got to be right with God. Seven's the number of completeness. Completely put the name in there. She goes, if Shelby was telling me, if my name gets drawn, speaking of her name, she said, draw another name because she's not here. And I told her, I said, now, you're here, but you have to go home and take care of your mom. She said, no, that's all right. And I said, well, if we draw Henny's name, <laughs> we drew Henny's name. Good job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, keep praying for her. She is definitely in need of prayer, so uh, getting through the surgery and stuff, so uh, give her a phone call today or tomorrow or uh, lift her up in prayer. Let her know you miss her and you're praying for her. Amen. Um, I do believe um, that is everything taken care of prior to preaching. I lost my, lost my announcements there. There it is. Let's see what we got here. Yes. Hallelujah. If there is children's church today, um, they're released. If there is not, children, just sit with your parents. Amen. We've, you know what? Why don't we, why don't we just do that today? Are you parents? Are your mothers all right sitting with you today? Oh, they already left. Well, Jennifer, you want them? Jennifer's like, no, they're good back there. <laughs> That's funny. I understand. <laughs> hey, man, it's good to be here on Mother's Day. It's good to be in church, period, but uh, being here on a Sunday morning on Mother's Day is a wonderful day, and uh, uh, we're gonna we're not gonna we're going with I guess tradition today, but not really tradition. I am going to preach a message on Mother's Day and concerning Mother's Day, but it may be a little uh, different kind of view. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's been preached a thousand times. Who knows? Uh, but the text is always used um, in a lot of churches. If you got your Bibles, turn to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter thirty-one. Amen. Proverbs thirty-one. 
talking to my son. I think it was, maybe it was, I don't know what it was, but I know it was Jessica last night. As, um, I had a good idea of what I was going to preach, and God came in and just flipped it all around and said, nope, this is what you're going to preach. So um, I told her the message should go quick because I don't have a whole lot of Scripture. Amen. So we'll see how that goes. I know you say broken record. We hear that every Sunday, preacher. Uh, but that's all right. Proverbs chapter 31. We're all going to be reading a, a nine verses in that today. Um, and I'll tell you, it is a great day, ain't it? Mother's Day. Um, it's a wonderful day. I, I think of the, the celebrations of times that it's always on the same day of the week, uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day, that type thing, even uh, Father's Day. But there's just something about Mother's Day, man, that it's so much more different than any other holiday. Um, it truly is a day of for what I consider a wonderful vocation uh, to be called into, this thing called motherhood. And you say, well, I'm not a mother. Well, I'm sure you've got people in your life, youngins in your life, that you are truly a, a, a mother figure to. And, you know, I think of the kids out there that maybe, maybe they got mamas that aren't uh, really teaching them good things, but I look back on my childhood, and there was always somebody in our crowd whose mother was teaching them the right thing the right way out of the right book. And, um, you know, oftentimes that was a very caring mother, and it seems that uh, uh, in those circles, most of the time, those kids tend to hang out at that boy's house. And that mother is able to impart some wisdom uh, from her life to those children that children never forget, amen. Don't think for a moment that uh, the things that you're teaching your children, it goes unnoticed. Uh, uh, they, will, they will get to a point when they look back and say, wow, mama was right. And uh, so that's what kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, as I said, on Mother's Day, uh, we do and we often speak of some great matriarchs of the Bible, uh, women who are recorded in Scripture that were mothers and uh, I think of Sarah, uh, the mother of Isaac, uh, uh, of course, being the wife of Abraham. Uh, Rebecca, a uh, mother of Jacob and Esau, and uh, we saw the struggle with those two boys. And uh, Rebecca is a mother of Isaac's wife. Um, uh, Jochebed, uh, you don't hear a whole lot about her, but uh, she was the mother of Moses, amen. And she, even though she sent her son down the Nile to save his life, uh, she ended up... Uh, uh, being a mother to Moses in the Pharaoh's house because they called her, uh, they called her and said, we need a Hebrew woman to nurse this child. And uh, so she did have a big impact on uh, imparting some good things in Moses' life uh, that he wouldn't have got from Pharaoh. Um, he wouldn't have got from any of the, the women of Egypt, uh, but he did get it from someone who was his mother, in fact. Uh, think of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, uh, you know, the prophet, uh, no doubt, uh, that was a woman that had great dedication towards having a child. And, uh, um, so she's spoken up very highly in the Bible. Uh, we think of Bathsheba, uh, the mother of Solomon, uh, of course, the wife of David. And we can say all kinds of things about Bathsheba all day long. Uh, but we're going to find out she was a good mother. And um, Elizabeth, uh, mother of John the Baptist, uh, uh, this man's crying out in the wilderness. Uh, there's no doubt that that woman... Uh, uh, showed John the Baptist some good things. Of course, can't forget Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, raising uh, that boy and uh, raising him up and uh, taking care of him when he couldn't walk, taking care of him when he couldn't do anything on his own, humbling himself. He's a God. He was God, humbled himself to come down here and be completely taken care of. Um, and he chose Mary. Uh, blessed among all women to be his mother. Uh, Jessica mentioned something yesterday talking about the brothers and the siblings of Jesus and, and you know, some very funny things when you think about how hard it would be to have a perfect sibling, uh, you know, but, but uh, I'm sure it was rough on Mary having a perfect child uh, that was not only perfect, uh, but that was sinless and never did no wrong. So, um, so she had the struggle of the perfect child along with those other children that she had that no doubt probably got in some mischief. Um, then you have the first mother, Eve. Now, the Bible calls her in Genesis 320, 320, the mother of all living. The Bible says, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. And although these women, uh, they lived in a very different time than what we did, 
Uh, they lived in a very different um, uh, lifestyle that we did. Um, some hard times. Uh, they're no different than being a mother today. Um, they had a stressful job. Mothers today have a very stressful job, a difficult job, uh, a, a confusing job. And anybody that has raised a child uh, knows that raising a child can be very confusing. And you know, we treat our kids differently. And it's because of that emotional bond that we have to them. And, and I think about that a lot when looking at my own kids and my own home and uh, uh, the treatment of other people uh, compared to the treatment of my kids. And the reason it becomes so confusing for mothers and for uh, people these days to raise a child, it is because of that emotional bond that you have with that child. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want to say anything. I can say something to some people and it doesn't bother me. Um, I don't like hurting people's feelings, but I don't think about it when I say it. But when I talk to my kids, and I watch it with Jessica, she's very precise and careful in some of the things she says. It can get confusing because you say something you, you know is right, but then the result isn't what you expected. And you wonder, did I do that right? Have I done that right? Did I say the right thing? Should I have waited? We were, I'm going to use this, babe, but I hope you don't mind. Um, we, we were talking yesterday at the kitchen table, and... Um, and now I'll just leave that out. I'll, I'll just leave that out. But, um, you know, we've had Jacob, uh, oldest boy here. And, and um, um, of course, Jacob was um, um, out of a, a previous marriage of mine. And, and um, so Jacob came out uh, the, uh, Saturday and said, uh, wished her a happy Mother's Day. And uh, Jessica didn't mean anything by it. And she goes, well, it's the day before. Um, and... And, uh, and then she says, but that's all right, because I'm not your mom. And, um, you know, and, and I saw it, and she didn't mean that that way. That it, and Jacob, I don't even think, took it that way. But last night, she was talking to me about that. She goes, I didn't really mean it. That, that could have that been hurtful. And, I, and, I, and she wouldn't have had no problem saying that to, the kid, to a kid that she didn't know, right, as a mother figure. But when she said, and she said you know, I think I'm going to apologize and right when she was saying that, Jacob walked out into the kitchen, into the, the, where the table was, where we were sitting. And she's making up these mother, uh, doing something uh, for Mother's Day. And I'm, I'm studying my Bible. And Jacob's right there. So he hears this. And I say, Jacob, or said so Jessica, he's just go ahead and do it now. <laughs> you know, so Jacob's like, whoa. And uh, uh, it was confusing for her. After she said that, she didn't know what to do because she didn't want to hurt feelings. Nobody wants to hurt their kids' feelings and make them feel bad. I said something yesterday to Norma that I wished I could have taken back. Or, and, you know, and we say things that emotional bonds tend to confuse us when we say things that wouldn't bother us with other people. Uh, so it is a confusing job. And of course, it is a thankless job. Uh, being a mother, uh, there's not a whole lot of things that children thank their mothers for, even though children should. And, um, you know, we just, as kids growing up, I think a lot of times uh, we take what the mother does for granted. And uh, so it's stressful, it's difficult, it's confusing, and it's a thankless job. And the women of old, the matriarchs in the Bible, they had these same problems that women today have. Uh, where you're no different than, than those, but... What is good is God has put something in a woman's heart that he's not put in anybody else's heart. And it's that genuine concern and care for a child. Uh, I, you know, there are exceptions to every rule, no doubt about it, but there's just something about the care of a mother that a father cannot give. And, and with that thought in mind, I, I would like to use our text in Proverbs 31 to talk about the influence of a mother. And I want to begin by reminding you that although Proverbs 31 is speaking of a particular son and what his mother taught him, the wisdom that conveyed that she conveyed can be used for any other mother at any other time, any circumstance in child rearing, both in daughters and in sons. So if we go to Proverbs chapter 31, we'll read the Bible. It says this, verse 1, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, not thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. 
It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is for the. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to drink princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and forget for, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto them, unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth. For the dumb in the cause of all such are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, as we read these nine verses, God, we ask that you just move on this message. God, I pray that you would take the text out of this book, out of this Bible, out of your word. And God, that you would use it to minister to each and every soul that is in here today. Uh, God, if there's a woman that is struggling, a mother that's having a hard time, if there is a grief uh, for things that are lost and gone, uh, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just minister them in ways that man cannot do. God, I also ask, uh, Lord, for anybody in here, Lord, that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, God, that you would just prick their hearts, uh, God, shuffle their feet a little bit, stir up their minds, and bring them to this old-fashioned altar and cry out for salvation to the one and only begotten Son that you have. God, I pray that you guide us and that you lead us here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to begin um, uh, talking about this first verse for a moment. Uh, there is a lot of debate uh, back and forth upon who this King Lemuel is. Um, now, I cannot tell you with any certainty, um, 100% certainty, who this may be. Uh, but there are some uh, that believe that this King Lemuel is actually Solomon. All right? That name is the name that was given to him by his mother. Um, it is a name that she called him, much like we would have nickname for kids. And, and it was a name that was considered precious to this son. And that's why the mother uh, called him that. Um, and you can read a little bit about that over in the book of Second Samuel. And, and, and to be honest with you, I'm inclined to believe that that is so. I'm inclined to believe that this king is actually Solomon. And with that, if it is in fact him, that would make this woman of whom this wisdom is that taught him this wisdom, that would make that woman Bathsheba. Um, and there is no doubt that Bathsheba understood stresses and difficulties that come with life um, as a woman and as a mother. Her husband Uriah was killed by the very man that would later become her husband. Um, as a result of the affair that she had with David, her newborn son died. Her son died um, at a very young age, uh, not even a day or two old. Um, and not only did he die, but David was told that his four sons would be required of him. And this, of course, being that first son. So she understood stresses. She understood confusion. She understood some difficulties that come with being a mother and that come with being a, a wife. She understood loss right off the bat. Um, she lost her husband. She lost her firstborn son at no fault of, of anything other than a king trying to hide a sin. There is no doubt she understood that being a mother is not an easy job. She had some life lessons that gave her some great wisdom. And when we think of the Bible, we think of uh, people of great wisdom. And I think of, I think of Daniel um, and, and his, his life. Um, he was a man that had some great uh, wisdom. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe he's the wisest man in the Bible. I believe Solomon, as the word says, he's the wisest man man that led he's the wisest uh he prayed for wisdom in leading but god gave daniel a special uh a special um a, a basket of of wisdom but when you think about solomon and this great wisdom he had he had some great wisdom but solomon had a problem solomon got his wisdom 
from this woman, and this woman taught him the right things, but Solomon did not follow the wisdom that his mother taught him. And what's happening here is King Lemuel, Solomon, is looking back. And he's realizing some of the things that his mother taught him that he should have listened to. And I'm going to point directly to you young children and to you teenagers today and let you know your mama has some wisdom. Listen to her. You may not understand it. You may not even believe it. You may even think she's lost her mind. But I'm telling you, she's older than you. She's lived longer than you. She's had more successes than you, made more mistakes than you, has more learning than you. It might be wise for you to take heed to some of the things she says. Um, Bathsheba taught Solomon a lot of good things. And what's happening here, as difficult as motherhood can be, she was successful. In spite of the failures of her son, she was successful. She may not have seen it, but she was successful. And as I pointed to the children, I'm going to point to the mothers today and just let you know, don't beat yourself to death over mistakes that you make as a mother. Because as many mistakes as you probably made, are going to make, or even are making today, you still got something you can teach your children. Focus on the good things and teach them, and don't go by the result. Just teach them. Teach them goodness. Teach them righteousness. Teach them some things. And Bathsheba taught Solomon some things. And what's happening here in this scripture as we read it, I want to draw your attention to verses 2 through 5. I was talking to my wife yesterday about these verses. We were on our way to Walmart to pick up some flowers. And I, I, I said, I noticed something in the scripture I never noticed before. And what it is is the punctuation marks. In verse 2, she says, What my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Bathsheba, what was happening there is she's looking at her son, and she's basically saying, I raised you? And this is what I got? You ever feel as a mother, this ain't how I taught you. I taught you better than that. Those question marks gave me a whole new outlook on this woman and the wisdom she was giving her son. And when you go down, and we're going to read a little bit about this, we find out exactly what the problem Solomon had was. And it's the same problem about every kid in here is going to have. But it's going to come to fruition, fruition in something else. The problem was Solomon did not take his mama's advice and it caused big trouble in his life. The wisest man to rule in the Bible. Half of the Proverbs were written by him. And we go to the Proverbs to get wisdom. We go to the Proverbs to get life lessons to learn what to do, what not to do, what we should do, what we can't do. All these things. That was taught to Solomon by Bathsheba. And Bathsheba's looking back and saying, Are you my son? You ever see your kid do something or they act a certain way in public and you're scratching your head and you're saying, I didn't teach him that. I taught him better than that. Where did he learn that from? You ever had a kid... Had a kid say a bad word and you don't cuss? Well, I didn't teach you that. Where'd you learn that from? I taught you better than that. But that word still comes out of that kid's mouth. Maybe he knows what he's saying. Maybe he don't know what he's saying. Maybe she knows. Who knows? But it came out nonetheless. And I'm picturing Bathsheba or any other mother looking down at her kids, looking at their kids' life and scratching their heads and saying, they should know better. I taught them better. I think about my mom. And, and my mom taught me some good things. She taught me some bad things. But she did teach me some good values um, growing up. Uh, it wasn't scriptural values. It wasn't church and things like that and Christianity. But I remember um, when I came back out of the military and the craziness of my life and how I was living, 
I remember my mom looking at me one time at one of the family dinners, and she's saying, I raised you better than that. She did. That's Bathsheba's attitude looking at her son Solomon. I raised you better than that. And in verse 3 it says, Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Elimel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to, to strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. He knew how to act. His mama taught him. He knew how to behave. His mama taught him. He knew how to speak. His mama taught him. But then you find in Solomon's life, and it's chronicled all throughout his life, what was his big problem? Women. She's saying, give not thy strength to women. That man, wisest man to rule, some even would argue is the wisest man in the Bible, had a problem with women. And that problem drew him away from righteousness. His mama said, don't let a woman give, don't give your strength to her. Your life should be in the hand of God. Your goal should be to please God. Your life should be to look to him and get wisdom. You need to listen to me, son. And Solomon goes out and builds temples for his wives to them false gods. I'm picturing Bathsheba saying, I taught you better than that. Why are you doing this? And Solomon, after all the trouble that that caused in his life, is remembering the wisdom of his mama. And he pins it down in Proverbs 31 so that we can read it and understand that we need to listen to our mamas. Because when we do, there's going to be trouble in our life that can be avoided. How many kids in here? <laughs> I could ask the mamas and get an honest answer. But how many kids in here can honestly say, Let's do teenagers, or let's do teenagers and young adults. Can honestly raise their hand and say, there's some things in my life I wished I would have taken my mama's advice on. Yeah. <laughs> Mama back there saying amen, and she's going, <laughs> amen. Honesty is always the best, best thing. Solomon had that problem too. He remembered. He remembered what, what Bathsheba taught him. He remembered that she said, you know, women are, can be trouble. She, you, you need to make sure you're wise when you're, don't let them have control of your life. Women have taken down kings. Women have taken down countries. And I'll tell you this much, behind every major war, you know what you will find? A woman in the background whispering in the king's ear. That's the truth. You say, oh, that's preaching. No, that's the truth. I mean, think about it. Even our own country. We have President Hillary, President Michelle Obama. I mean, I can go on. It's not just Republicans or Democrats, amen. <laughs> Don't allow someone else to control you. Allow God to have that control. A good mother teaches that to her children. Don't give strength to the women. Let God have the power in your life. I'm so glad, my Father in heaven, I'm so glad that my God knows how to lead and guide me. And I'm so thankful that God puts mothers in people's lives to convey that wisdom to them. This child, Solomon, had gotten himself in trouble with both women and alcohol, amen, and it was his downfall. It was it. God split the kingdom over those issues. You know, we are not much different. I know it's Mother's Day, and we're talking about mothers. But all of us in here this room, all of us that are born again, all of us that aren't born again, we're no different than Solomon. We don't like to take advice. We like to do things our own way. We don't like to listen to those that have the rule over us. We would much rather do things our own way. But praise be to God, His Word always knows where we are, always knows what we're doing, always knows where we're going, and always knows where we're going to end up if we would just heed to the wisdom of the Word of God 
And it knows where we're going to end up if we don't heed to the wisdom of the Word of God. The Word is in you. And I'm telling you this, I can, I can vouch for this as a father or as a, as a son that didn't take his mama's advice. I never got a moment's rest because it was always ringing in the back of my head. I didn't raise you that way. Are you my son? What do you think you're doing? But that same word that convicts is the same word that soothes. Once again, speaking of mothers, there is no better medicine for a wayward child than the forgiveness of a mother. I've seen men that are scary. I've seen men that the last thing I would want to do is have them coming after me. And uh, they're big, they're mean. Some are even ugly, I don't know. But, but something I've always found interesting with men like that, they're babies when it comes to their mamas. And I don't care whether she was a good mama, whether she was a bad mama, there's something about saying something about somebody's mama that'll make a son or a daughter bring out the claws or bring out the clubs. And uh, Solomon remembering what his mother taught him is in a moment of repentance because he feels bad for the trouble and the stress that it may have caused Bathsheba. He's remembering what his mother taught him and realizing everything that she said is true. That's why a mother's influence is the most important thing in a child's life. And as a mother, pray to God that you'll be a good influence. Pray to God that when you're lead, leading your children, when you're raising your children, that you hold fast to that which is true. You hold fast to that sound doctrine. You hold fast to the Word of God. You hold fast to morals. You hold fast to good living. You hold fast to clean living. You hold fast to doing right by mankind. Love your brother. Love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Hold fast to that. Hold fast to the give unto others as you would have give unto them. Hold fast to those things that Jesus taught, that Bathsheba's mother taught. Hold fast to those things. And in the end, the Bible makes a promise to you. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart. He shall not depart. And you say, well, I prayed for my kid for 20 years, and he's not saved. I prayed for my kid for 20 years, and he's not coming to church. I prayed for my kid for 20 years that he would do this and do this. Hold fast. Pray for that son. Because, pray for that son. Pray for that daughter. Because I can tell you this much, nobody prays for a child more than a mother. Good mothers are hard to find these days. Praying mothers are hard to find. Train that child up in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now let's go down to verse 8. The Bible says, Open thy mouth, for the dumb is in the cause of all such are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. There is so much in those two scriptures. Uh, time is not going to allow me uh, to just go into those verses, even teach on them or anything, because there's just so much in there. It would be a long study. Uh, not that we won't maybe in the future, but that's not what today is about. I want to keep it simple today. Bathsheba has taught her son to care for people. He's she's taught her son to have a heart. She's taught her son to be helpful, to plead the cause of the poor and needy. And for a group of people that cannot speak for themselves, the dumb, the poor and the needy, she is looking at her son and she raised him up and she said, you are going to be king. Your father is David and it's going to be passed down to you and you will have all the resources you need. You will have all the help that you need. You will have all the servants that you need. You will have all the gold that you need. You will have all the land that you need to be a voice for those that need a voice. To be a voice for those that can't speak for themselves. You know, I would love to be a voice to tell people things, but I don't have the resources. All I can do is worry about the little place that God has me. That's my job. Solomon had the resources. Bathsheba taught him, don't take it for granted. Make good use of it. 
We was talking today in Sunday school, and we was talking about wisdom, and uh, one of the students said it's knowledge. Wisdom is knowledge. And, you know, he's not wrong, uh, so it wasn't a wrong answer. But I said, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what we know. What matters is what we apply. Wisdom teaches you how to take what you know and then apply it in your life so that you can have the fruit of that knowledge. If you don't apply it, there's going to be no fruit of that knowledge. You can have book knowledge and not know how to live. You can have Bible knowledge and not be saved. You can have Bible knowledge and not know how to lead. There are so many things that you can have. Only wisdom is going to be able to teach you that. And where does wisdom start? Proverbs chapter 8. Today's proverb, if you're a proverb reader, look at wisdom. Look at her cry. And I love it that wisdom has been given a female gender. I think about that on this Mother's Day. Mothers full of wisdom. Standing high, watching the paths of their children, watching the ways that they are taken, watching the steps when they're on the path and praising the Lord, watching the steps when they're off of the path and bowing down on their knees and crying out to God, saying, God, steer them back. And then looking down and seeing what's ahead of them and realizing if they drink, realizing if they lie, if they deceive, if they cheat, if they do all these things, if they lie to me and they hide from me and they run around and they do this that I don't teach them. And I say, where's my son? Is this my son? And then they cry out to God that they would see their path and where it's going to end up and that they would then repent and change their ways. As we all stand, I want to ask you this question. As Mary Jo or George Ann comes to the piano, I want to ask you this question. Today is about mothers. Good mothers, bad mothers, any mothers. But what I love about my God is he can take the life of a mother and he can take a scripture and he can take a story about a mother or the wisdom of the mother and he can flip that thing right around to the blood of Jesus Christ. What does a mother do? She teaches her children. Is that not what a mother does? She warns her children of impending danger. The influence, she convicts the words that she says were convicting Solomon. He was remembering what she said about giving women the reign in his life. She was, he was remembering what Bathsheba said about alcohol and all that stuff and the trouble that it has. She warned him and he remembered and then his heart began to be convicted. And he started to cry out and say, you know what, mom, you were right. I should have listened to you. But then once again, that mother says, you're my son, I love you. You'll always be my son. And she opens up her arms and welcomes him in for forgiveness. Not only forgiveness, she puts that thing under the blood. Thank God for good mothers. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. But you know what? For all mankind, God has been what the mother of Proverbs 31 is. God has warned us through his word. He said, listen, if you don't trust me as your savior, you don't trust the blood of Jesus Christ, you will die and go to hell. Then God has given us the Holy Spirit to convict us. He said, I've given you my word, and now my spirit will come and convict you and make you realize what you did. For the wages of sin is death. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then he says this, I have given you my only begotten son for forgiveness. Christ cried out from the cross in sorrow as he looked at mankind and their wayward ways and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We serve a great God. And our great God uses mothers to plant something within a child's heart so that when they are old, they remember and they go back to the righteous ways of that mother through the word of God, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Heads bowed, eyes closed. How many people can raise their hands today and say, you know what, preacher? I'm thankful for my mother. I'm glad I'm here. Have you thanked her today? You know, being thankful and thanking are two different things. Thankful is like knowledge. You have it. 
But giving thanks to her is the fruit of that. That's the wisdom. How many people in here can say, you know what, preacher, I know beyond a shadow of doubt, I've heeded to the warning God gave me. I've heeded to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And I've went to God to ask him for forgiveness. How many people can raise their hand and say, I've done that, preacher? Amen. Hands all over the room. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody out there that can say, you know what? I've not done that. I won't embarrass you. I won't mention your name. But can you raise your hand and you say, preacher, I'm not sure where I'm going to spend eternity. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for me? Mothers, can you raise your hand and say, you know what? I've made some mistakes. But I'm willing to let all that go because I love my children. I've taught them good things. I've made some mistakes, but I've taught them some good things. But I'm having a hard time getting rid of some of those things. I can't let it go. You raise your hand and say, preach, pray for me. Amen. Amen. Hands all over the room. And I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. But you know what? I'm going to open up this altar. Eyes bowed or eyes closed, head still bowed. If you're not saved, come up here and get saved. That's the most important thing. If you're a mother, you've maybe made some mistakes, come up here and drop them off at the foot of Jesus. Put them in the, under the blood and then just leave it here when you walk away. Maybe you just want to grab your mama and say, thank you, mama. Thank you for what you've done. Come up here and pray with her. Altar is open. Dear Lord God, I pray that you move on this altar call. Touch your people's hearts in Jesus' name. Altar's open. Come up here at the old fashioned altar today. When was the last time you prayed with your children? When was the last time you prayed with your mom? Maybe you don't pray at home. This is a great opportunity. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to see you come up here. Don't be embarrassed. Grab your mom. Grab your dad. It's good. Keep our heads bowed and eyes closed. We'll go ahead and close in prayer. Go home and have a good day with your mom. Tell her you love her. Tell, thank her. Thank her for what she's, the sacrifices that she's given you and the wisdom that she has taught you. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for the service. Thank you for, uh, Lord, those that came out, uh, Lord, to uh, hear the songs of Zion being sung. Hear, uh, Lord, your name being lifted up. God, to hear whatever word uh, that was coming out of the pulpit today. God, I pray that you help our hearts. God, help us to remember those things that we were taught as a child, uh, Lord, and bring them back to the forefront of our mind on how we ought to be. God, what a blessed calling it is, uh, Lord, to be a mother, to have a mother. God, to be able to talk to a mother. God, for those that don't have that, that aren't able, uh, Lord, I pray that you just minister to their heart this afternoon. Encourage them and help them, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Flower as you walk out.